Hello everyone, welcome to another repair video. Today we're going to be working on this PlayStation 5 which has been sent in and this might very well be one of the first issues of this kind that's been documented on a video. I'm not 100% sure, I haven't really researched whether or not it's true, um, but this particular console suffered a damaged HDMI port and after a technician has replaced the HDMI port it has no display. So. What I'm thinking has happened here is when the HDMI port was damaged, it's probably ended up with a uh, damaged HDMI encoder. Now there's a big problem with the HDMI encoder and that's the fact that we can't buy it or at least not at the time of filming. Uh, the part number for the HDMI encoder is MN864739. So it's a little step up from the MN864729 from the PS4 Pro, uh, but we can't buy it, unfortunately. But luckily, I do have a couple of donor boards for the PlayStation 5, which I'm going to be able to use for parts. So hopefully, I should be able to get this done. I've got two of these in the queue. Two have been sent today by the same company, and both of them have display issues. So I'm going to be live streaming one tonight. That would have already happened by the time this video goes out. But I'll be live streaming one of them tonight and I'll be doing this one on the video now. So fingers crossed we can actually get it working. So as I just mentioned, I do have a PlayStation 5 donor board. And I'll just show you where the HDMI encoder is on this. So we've got the PlayStation 5 HDMI port just here. And then just below here we've got the MN864739. So I'll just give you a close up view of that. And so it's a little bit awkward for me to do this on camera, but there is the HDMI encoder I see. And as you can see there, uh, that goes directly to the HDMI port, and that is basically it. So it's a little bit tricky for me there to be able to actually get that to show up because I've got to set the autofocus manually and things like that. But it's basically, that's the HDMI encoder that I'm going to be needing to, or probably needing to change, assuming that the... HDMI port and the surrounding components are all good, but I'll double check that when we get inside the machine But first of all, let's see what's actually happening with this and uh, Then we can see what we can do about getting it fixed. So if I switch to the overhead camera here um, We can just take a look at the HDMI port itself and the HDMI port does look good Because that's been changed already by another technician. So hopefully he's done the job correctly but it would make it a lot simpler if he actually hadn't. Um, but as far as I'm aware, the technician that's worked on this has done about 10 of these so far. And um, he's only had a problem with the last two. So uh, we'll see. We will see. So I'm going to turn the console on. Okay, so we can see we've got the blue light here. As you can see there. So I'm going to lower this down now, just so I can make sure I don't knock it over and it looks like it might have gone into safe mode so what I'm going to do is just switch over to the TV and just see if it's actually picking up so I'm going to use the TV directly for this So I'm actually going to swap out the HDMI cable because I've got the wrong one plugged in. So let's just plug that in there and let's just see what happens. So we're on a white light. Okay, and I'm definitely plugged into HDMI 2 there and we definitely do not have a signal. So I'm just going to give the cable a little wiggle just to see if anything happens. And nothing at all is happening. Alright, so we've definitely got no signal there then. So, the console is 100% on. I'm not sure if the white bar is going to come across there. I think it just about, just about comes across, uh, just on the camera there. But, 100% uh, we have no signal here on this one. So, like I said, hopefully this is going to be something straightforward. But, at the same time, I do have replacement, uh, well, spare parts available, should the need arise. Okay, so let's get this thing apart then. 
Where's that gone? Alright, so I'm probably going to do a time lapse of this, but before your attention disappears elsewhere, if you are new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so that you don't miss any future videos. Hopefully, I'm going to start seeing more of these consoles soon so as we can get some more repair guides out there. Okie doke, so now the plastics are off, we can start to tackle the mounting of screws. Right, little tip here, just push the connector as you're taking that off. Don't want to be damaging those connectors, they're not easy to replace. Replace a ball, but not easy. Okay, so I'm going to disconnect all of these wires here. And all of the ribbon cables and then I basically just need to go around removing every screw and there are a lot of them so just be warned I think I think when I counted there was over 60 I didn't count exact but I think there was over 60 screws in this to get to the motherboard so definitely not for the faint of hearted that's for sure I mean it's generally easy to find your way around and actually get the screws back in the right place but it's no easy feat to actually get the screws out I'll move that out of the way because that's not part of it Okay, I think that's all of them. Apart from the heatsink clamp. I think that's all of them. Only one way to find out. There we go. Awesome. Okay, right, so there's the metal shield off. Or the uh, secondary heatsink, as I call it. So I need to remove the primary heatsink now which is a Phillips screwdriver bit pH zero should be fine these are very beefy clamps on these PlayStation 5s alright there we go and that too okay so for this ribbon just here what I tend to do is, I'll say, I'll say what I tend to do, I mean I've only worked on a couple of these, but what I tend to do with this here is just press on the metal retention clip and then just try and use a pry tool to slide down the back of it and then pull it out nice and straight so as I don't damage the connector. Uh, but uh, you might find it another way is easier, of course. Uh, another thing as well is I notice have a few people, well, most people remove the power supply to actually get into it. I don't really think it's necessary. So the only thing that's actually holding this together is the power supply connector itself. Which I just disconnect using my pry tool. I don't put any pressure on the board, I just use the pry tool to actually lift it. And then what we need to do is just lift this up and remove the motherboard nice and straight and then just flip it around 
Okay, there we go. So, I'm going to pop these to one side. It looks like it's had some fresh liquid metal. But I will probably add some to that because it doesn't look like there's going to be enough on it. So I'm going to pop the rest of the console to one side. And now we can work on the motherboard. So like I said, the HDMI encoder I see is just here. Let's go under the microscope and see what's going on and see if we can see anything that's obvious before we just go ahead and blindly change the HDMI encoder. Right, okay, ladies and gents, so I went and paused while I got the microscope set up, and like a fool, I didn't unpause it, so I've lost about 10 minutes of footage, sadly. But what I've discovered with this is that the HDMI port wasn't soldered correctly, and also that there's a torn trace as well. So I am really sorry about the footage, but all it was was me just basically touching this port up a little bit but what I'm going to do is rather than touching the port up I'm going to get it replaced so I'm going to go back out of the microscope and I'm just going to move that to one side and like I said unfortunately I did lose a little bit of footage there but I was only touching that port up but it's a little bit melted anyway so I want to get it replaced rather than having to resolve a port that's possibly melted so I've got my hot air set to 480 degrees celsius and like I said, there is a torn trace on this pin number 19 is torn, sadly. So uh, that's going to be one of the reasons why it's not displaying. Or at least probably going to be one of the reasons why it's not displaying. So I'm going to get this port removed. I have got some replacement ports. So I'm just going to hover the hot air over the port. And just lift that port off. There we go. Okay, so I'll get that port changed. Okay, so let's take a look under the microscope now. And we'll see what's going on with the port itself. Right, you are. So let's just give this a clean up with some isopropyl alcohol. Just get rid of this flux. So I was touching the port up just to resolder the pins. There was about 15 pins that wasn't soldered. So obviously... It's not going to work, if that's the case. There we go. And as we can see here, and for some reason, my camera's flipped up the opposite way around. So let me, tr let me just fix that. There we go, that's much better. So now left is left and right is right. It's so annoying when that happens. So let's just zoom in on this end and just see what's going on. And as we can see here, we have pin number 19 missing. And pin number 19 is hot plug detect. So basically what that means is when you plug and unplug the HDMI port, the console should detect that the HDMI port's been removed or that the HDMI port's been plugged in. And then you should adjust your display and things accordingly. If, you, if for example, you're on an older monitor and you've only got like um, a low resolution like 64480 it would switch it to that or if you've got a 1080p monitor it would switch it to 1080p or for example 4k it would switch it to a 4k monitor so very obviously we're not going to get anything working without that pin being there so what I will do is I will leave that pin for now and I'll run a jumper wire to that when I've dropped a new port on but what I want to do first is just clean up these pins make sure that we've got enough solder on them and damn it I've lost a capacitor I'll fix that real quick and that was with the micro pencil never mind okay so I'll pop my nozzle on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock my airflow down to 20% to reinstall that capacitor the console would work with it on 
without it on there. And that's gone. Never mind. I'll take it off the donor board. It's fine. Gone with the wind. Let's just see if I can see it. Nah, it's gone. <laughs> Never mind. Alright, so let's add a bit more flux here. There we go. So more than enough solder on those ground on those legs on those pins now. So let's just add some solder to the ground legs. So because I've got the micro pencil on, I'm just adding a little bit of heat here. Let's just pop over to this side. All right. So now that the ground legs have got leaded solder mixed in with them, I'm going to clean them out with the solder sucker. Okay, that should be good enough. So I'm going to grab a brand new port now. Okay, so brand new HDMI port there. So let's just drop this into position. Okay, so let's take a look on an angle then. Make sure we've got good alignment. And we do. Okie doke. Right, so what I need to do then is just tack this down slightly so as the pins are in line with the board and then I can get the ground leg solder to secure it into place. I'm going to push down on the port Alright, so let's just take a look at those couple of pins, just make sure that they're actually solid. Yep, so those pins are in line, they're all, the ones I've soldered are solid, so let me flip the board around. And what I want to do is just add some solder to the ground legs. So as to secure it in place, and then I can carry on with the other side. I might need to switch irons for this. Okay, as long as there's some solder there, I can use the hot air afterwards. Save, save changing the iron just to change it back again. So obviously because I'm using the micro pencil I've got absolutely no thermal mass on this at all. But it's it's a lot quicker to just do it this way than to have to change the iron. So I'd rather do it this way. So just add some hot air. Good. So, once I've finished the port itself, I'll put a bigger tip on the normal iron and fi fix that properly. Make sure that it's got enough solder on it. But for now, that's good enough to a point where I can hold it in place so I can, so I can actually solder the pins properly. 
so let's go over to this side then add some flux And you'll notice how I'm going to tin pin number 19. Ready to accept a jumper. So let's just give that a clean and then I can check the pins, make sure that they're all good and make sure that they're all soldered nicely. And let's dry that off. Okay. Right, so let's just check these pins by hand. And then I'm going to check them with the multimeter as well. Make sure there's no bridges underneath the port. Good. Every pin is soldered. Okay, so next, like I said, I want to check and make sure that all of these pins are good to go. So I've got the multimeter in continuity mode, just checking each pin. And good. Every one of those seem fine. So all we've got to do now is run that jumper wire and it should technically work. So now I'm going to get some 0.017mm jumper wire. And I'm going to run a jumper from pin number 19 to the end point, which is going to be this wire just here. So what I'm going to do is just expose that trace just scrape away the conformal coating there and what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to solder that to that part of the pad and restore the connection for that pin there we go So we've got a nice blob of solder there. And I'm also going to tin this trace. Solder that on there. And then to the end point there. And there we go. break this excess wire off and clean up <laughs> uh, 
and that appears to be perfect. So one thing I do want to grab is this capacitor just off this donor board I've got here. So here's the capacitor just on the end of my tweezers. You can see how small that actually is. So for some reason I just cannot keep my hands still today. There we go, that will do. So you'll notice I didn't use hot air there. And the reason for that is because there's a narrow jumper wire there and I don't want to use hot air around the jumper wire. I could have put the capacitor back before but there was a chance of knocking it off again so I'd rather not. Let's just give this a final clean. And done. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to give these one final inspection using tweezers. And perfect. Okay. So that now should theoretically be good to get back together and uh, it should theoretically work now so that was relatively straightforward like I said it, it's a bit annoying that I lost a little bit of um, little bit of footage earlier on but given the fact that I was changing the port anyway uh, or rather I decided decided against reusing that port anyway uh, it doesn't really matter about the extra, the lost footage. Um, so we need to get this back together now, uh, enough for testing, and hopefully it's going to work. Right, okay, so I've got some fresh conductor nut, some uh, liquid metal, and I'm just going to reapply liquid metal to the uh, to the console. So I'm just going to get the run off from on here okay uh, whoops a little bit of air in there I'm just going to spread this all the way around to make sure that it's all on the die. And Tronics Fix made a very good video on applying liquid metal. You should definitely go check that out. I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner now. Definitely gave me an insight into applying the liquid metal properly. Uh, So yeah, let's uh let's just show you that. I'm gonna pop that to one side and move over to this here. Okay, and I'm just gonna reset this stuff here. There we go, just make that nice and clean. And then we can start to reassemble. 
Okay, I don't see any dust inside the vents, so it looks like that's been cleaned out already. Which is fine. And where's that? Hmm. That's not good. Right, well that's not good because that's missing and I don't have a spare. So yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna remove a little bit of this liquid metal from here. Uh I don't know where that original's gone. But unfortunately there is absolutely nothing that I can do about it. So I've removed a little bit by retracting it back into the syringe. And it doesn't look like it's going to overflow. It should be absolutely fine, but... Yeah, I'm not comfortable with that at all. But unfortunately, like I said, there is absolutely nothing whatsoever that I can do about it, apart from just putting normal thermal paste on, and that's not going to work, is it? So... Yeah, that's not an option. Uh, well... We've just got to hope that it doesn't end up seeping out. Sadly. Never mind. Alright, so. Time to get this put back together enough for testing. I'm not going to put it fully back together. Just going to put it back together enough to test. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get the secondary heat sink back on. So like I said, I just want to test it. I can put it back together later on. But for now, it's all about just making sure everything is hooked up properly. And making sure it works. Just saves time on the video, that's all. I could put it back together and then test it, but until I know it works, I don't want to have to put 60 something screws back in. So <laughs> I'd rather just, uh, actually, let's hook up the Wi Fi antennas. So I'd rather, do, I'd rather just do it like this, and um, obviously I can put it back together off off camera later on. This video is already going to be awkward to edit because of losing a little bit of footage. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that in line. It might help if I didn't plug that in first. So I'm only putting this plastic cover on so as I can put the fan in place because otherwise it's just going to go flying all over the place. lock that down in place and good awesome let's drop that in line okay we're ready to test moment of truth let's hope and pray that it's going to work okay and let's just pop in 
HDMI cable, there we go. Let's turn on the TV. And turn on the console. So now let's see if it boots up, shall we? Input 2 is detected. Yes. We've got a display. We have a display. Excellent. Okay, right. So I'm going to let that reboot. And then we'll give it a quick test. And there we go. So, apologies for the wobbly camera there. I'm just going to connect up a controller. So, I'm going to connect up to USB-C. And then I'm going to hook up my official PS5 DualSense. And that's not sinking for some reason. All right, let me try another cable. Try another. I'll try a standard USB cable, or USB to USB C rather. Right. For some reason, I have no controller sync at all. Hmm. All right, do I need to connect up to the back? Right, so yes, I know the screen is broken. Ignore that, please. I bought it as a broken screen. Um, purely for testing. Right, okay, so let's uh, just run through. Let's run through this. Settings. Um, resolution we have 2160p so that's working yep everything appears to be working let's check 1080p make sure it handles that okay and then back to 10 back to 4k perfect absolutely perfect okay and I am happy with that so let's just check a game make sure that works so I haven't got any official PS5 games it's still quite expensive. I'm not spending £50 on a game just to use to test. Not when I can connect up a PS4 game. Okay, so FIFA 16 should load up. And there we go. Excellent. FIFA 16 is loading up. Absolutely fine. Okay, so that's pretty much it then. So let's just summarise on this one then. So this was sent in because he had no display after a HDMI port replacement by another technician. Uh, unfortunately, on closer inspection, it turned out that the technician had just not soldered the port correctly, and also there was a missing trace on the HDMI circuit. So, by replacing the port and by uh, by also running a jumper wire to the endpoint from the HDMI port itself to restore the connection, we was able to get this console working again. And as you can see, it's working perfectly behind me, or rather to the side of me here. 
uh, and these can go back to the customer and the customer can be happy. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I will always do my best to answer. And if you want to organise your own repair, you can do so by getting in touch using the email address in the video description. If you enjoy what you see, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so that you're notified every time that I upload. And if you do want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member by clicking on the link in the video description or by clicking on the join button above or just below the video as well. All channel members and all Patreon supporters get early access to all of my videos apart from when it's something that I'm doing for the first time like this. Uh, this one will go out today um, as a public video but most of the time I do post them as early access videos. But that's going to be for this one ladies and gents. Thank you very much for watching and until next time I'll see you later. Bye for now.